This new airbrush company called Gallery was launched a few months ago, so naturally I had to check them out. I bought two of their airbrushes, one being the Ace Series GHAC98, and the one that we'll be looking at today, which is the GHAD39. And I want to point out that I purchased both of these airbrushes at full retail price from Amazon with my own money, so this review is going to be completely independent. This company, Gallery, did reach out to me and offered to send me an airbrush at no cost to review, which was very nice of them, but I didn't accept it because I want to keep all these airbrush reviews fair. I bought all the other ones with my own money, so I'm going to continue doing that on this channel. And the reason that I decided to buy it was to check out this new nozzle design, which I haven't seen before. The nozzle itself has eight micro air channels on it, which help direct that airflow over the nozzle tip. This is supposed to help atomize the paint better, and I gotta say it's a pretty cool design. And I bought this one for 40 US dollars, which is a great price for what you're getting. The airbrush comes in this nice box, and inside you get plenty of accessories to go along with it. You get some documentation, which is a quick start guide. There's plenty of good information in here, but the English is not so great. The GHAD39 also comes with two removable paint cups, one at a half ounce and the other at a quarter ounce. You also get a tube of airbrush lubrication, which is really nice to see at this price point. You also get a couple of these Teflon O-rings, which you could use to replace on the nozzle if the other ones wear out but these tend to last pretty long. And my favorite thing is that you get an extra nozzle, which is larger at 0.5 millimeters, and you also get the air cap to go along with it. And you get the corresponding larger needle, which is also 0.5 millimeters. A nice bonus is that you get one of these quick adapters that you can screw onto the bottom of the airbrush, and these will connect with the female end of any other one. I use the Iwata one. This fits into it perfectly. In the hand, this airbrush has some weight to it. It definitely feels solidly built, and it just doesn't feel cheap like some of those inexpensive airbrushes that you could pick up for $20 or so. It does have a very nice chrome coating on it, but it's not perfect. I noticed as soon as I took it out of the box, on the back here, there's a small scratch on it. The chrome is on top of this scratch, meaning that this was there before this airbrush was chrome coated. To me, this isn't really a big deal, but I did notice it, so I wanted to point it out in this review. Right out of the box, the GHAD39 comes with a 0.35 millimeter needle and nozzle, so I would consider this a general use airbrush, meaning that you could still definitely get some really good detail with it, as long as you hold it close to the surface. But a 0.35 is also going to be more forgiving when you're spraying a thicker paint, like an airbrush paint directly from the bottle. Better yet, if you're spraying a thick paint and you want some wider coverage, you could just swap this out with a 0.5 millimeter needle and nozzle, which comes in the box. If we look at the front of the airbrush underneath a macro lens, it definitely has some imperfections in that machining process. This shouldn't have any effect on the spray quality of the airbrush. It's not great to see, but again, at 40, 45 US dollars, it's not really that big of a deal, but I wish this was better. As I mentioned before, the paint cups are removable, and inside the airbrush, you have a small PTFE seal in here, which is nice to see because it prevents any paint from leaking out. And the machining in here, where the paint flows toward the nozzle, is very good. The rear handle does have a cutaway, and you could use this to quickly flush out any clogs or dried paint in the nozzle. And on the back here, you do have a needle limiter. Gallery calls this their preset control knob. Some new painters may appreciate this. It's a very simple design. A lot of airbrushes have it. If you screw this down, it just limits how far you can pull back on the trigger. So if you screw this down a few turns, it'll prevent you from pulling the trigger back, meaning that you're going to get less paint. I personally never use these, but again, if you're just kind of starting out and you're scared you're going to spray too much paint, this could be helpful. So like always, let's move along to a breakdown so you can see the internal parts. First off, after unscrewing the rear handle, which again, feels solidly built, it doesn't feel cheap, we can unscrew the chuck here and remove the needle. This screw right here is the spring case, and out of everything I've seen on this airbrush, this is the first part that I noticed that just looks kind of cheap to me. This is probably me being very nitpicky, but if you compare it here to the Iwata Revolution, you can see the difference. I'm not saying in any way that it's bad, it just doesn't have that premium feel that you see on Iwata airbrushes. And you can control the airbrush's spring tension by either how far you tighten or loosen the spring case. And I always recommend keeping this on the tighter side because if you ever paint it with an airbrush and you just press down and you notice paint without pulling back on the trigger, this is usually the cause of it. And once this is removed, this is the entire spring assembly. It consists of three parts, just like Iwata airbrushes. You have the guide, the spring, and that housing. And the trigger itself here looks like a direct copy of the Iwata Eclipse. It's not completely identical, but it's pretty similar, and I've always found these round triggers to be very comfortable. 
and unfortunately this trigger lever guide is not connected to the needle chucking guide. This part can be easy to lose, but my real problem with it is that it just makes putting the airbrush back together so much more difficult than it needs to be. But I am aware that some people actually prefer this separately because they say that it gives a smoother trigger feel. So whether or not that's true, I honestly can't tell the difference. I would prefer it connected like um, Iwata airbrushes, but this is similar to the Badger design. You get used to it. At the bottom here, I used a pair of soft jaw pliers to unscrew this air valve assembly. This is nice to be able to take this off easily if you're cleaning your airbrush and you don't want to get moisture or water in this. And at the front here, we have the reason that I wanted to buy this airbrush to check it out, and that's this new nozzle design. You can see that those notches in that floating nozzle are designed so that the air flows over them to evenly direct the airflow over the nozzle tip. And this nozzle is large enough to easily hold in your hand, which makes it very easy to swap out if you're switching over to that larger 0.5, or if you broke it and you need to replace it. And the actual body of this airbrush feels very good. Looked inside here, the machining looks excellent. Very nice job here. The only point that I didn't like was on the front here, which I pointed out before, the machining around these threads just looks a little sloppy to me. And you could see here how easy it is to put that nozzle back in. You just place it on the front of the airbrush and take the air cap, screw it back down, and it's done. So I would say that the build quality is very good on this airbrush, but if we add the price in, I would say it's excellent because at 40 or 45 US dollars, I don't think I've seen a build quality like this at that price. And these replaceable airbrush cups are just a great thing to have because over the years, after 5-10 years, cups tend to wear out. The chrome just kind of wears off. So to me anyway, it's just nice to know that if it starts to wear, you could just swap it out with a new one. I wanted to see what this nozzle looked like under high magnification, so I put it underneath the microscope and everything looks very good. The machining on this is excellent. It's definitely not the most polished nozzle in the world, but it's still really good, and this is about what you see from any other airbrush brand. The opening is also perfectly symmetrical, and I don't see any imperfections here, so very well done. I also use the magnifying glass to look inside the paint cup. You can see here, it's very nicely finished. Now this video is only a review of the GHAD39, but I did reach out to Gallery to ask them why that other brush, the 98, was so much more expensive. And I'll get into that information when I do the full review of it. But one thing they mentioned is that the needle is a different material and it's a much higher polish. So I decided to just to check it out really quickly underneath the microscope. And you can see here with the 98 on the left and the 39 on the right, there's a pretty big difference. The left one has a much nicer finish to it, much more highly polished. But I definitely want to look closer at that one, paint with it a little bit longer to see if it really warrants that much higher price point. We'll get to that one in the future, but for now, let's go to the important part of this airbrush to see how the GHAD39 sprays. The first thing I'm checking here is the trigger response rate. It's pretty good, but it's not great. You can see here as I'm pulling back on the trigger, it's a little bit farther back and it seems to be slightly inconsistent. And this is the same Createx Illustration Color Sepia paint that I strained myself, so it's definitely not the paint. And you know, this may have something to do with that new nozzle design, I'm not sure. All I could say that is compared to an Iwata, even like the Iwata Revolution, this is just not as precise. And I'm not talking about the atomization of paint here, I'm just talking about the trigger response, meaning that if I pull back to a certain mount, do I get paint at that same point every time? For the consistency test, this airbrush did an excellent job, it did a beautiful job at atomizing that paint. I did notice, again though, in the beginning there was a bit of delay before I started painting, you can see here on the left that it spit just a bit of paint there as I was starting out. And for fine lines, this airbrush is excellent. It does an amazing job. I can get a line just as thin as I can with an Iwata Micron, basically about the width of a human hair, maybe slightly larger, but close to that. So even at a needle and nozzle size of 0.35, you can still get plenty of detail with this airbrush. I also noticed that it seemed to have a slightly lower airspeed, which I'm a huge fan of. It just makes it a bit more comfortable when you get really close to the subject that you're painting. And the airspeed is really just a subjective thing. I prefer lower because I tend to do a lot of detail work and I'm very close to the surface. And when I'm close like that, it just feels more comfortable to not have that higher airspeed blowing back. And then finally, checking the nozzle for leaks using some soapy water. There's no bubbles here, meaning there's no leaks, so always great to see. So I've been working on this multi-figure painting, which is a scene in the rain. And it's for a painting tutorial on this channel, where I'm just kind of showing how water tends to distort and abstract things. So I've been painting this hand here with this really crazy lighting on it, this very dramatic lighting. And for all of this painting, I've been using my Iwata Micron Takumi, 
but I decided to switch over to this airbrush to see how it compared. What I'm doing here is adding some skin texture to the wrist, just a few small dots of this flesh tone mixture. And basically what I'm doing here is just adding some of the shadows for the raindrops. So I would definitely consider this detail work and this airbrush was doing a great job. It atomized the paint absolutely perfectly and it was putting the paint exactly where I wanted it to. That trigger response, like I mentioned before, is not perfect. In no way is it bad, but it's just not that absolute precision that I'm used to using my Awada airbrushes. And what I mean by that is that as I pull back on the trigger for paint, it's not giving me the exact same amount every single time. It's still very good. I have excellent control with it, but I tend to be very picky with this. It's one of the things that I want to see really as close to perfect as possible. But like all my airbrush reviews, this is just my opinion. These are my preferences. And once the airbrush starts spraying, it's flawless. I didn't notice any sort of graininess. It just did such a great job at atomizing the paint and it put it down exactly where I was pointing. Sometimes with cheaper airbrushes, the needle and nozzle are not perfectly centered and aligned. So you'll notice the airbrush is kind of spraying slightly off in one direction. I didn't notice any of that here. This just did a perfect job. So would I recommend this airbrush for $45? Absolutely. This is just a phenomenal deal. It's kind of an exciting time in the airbrush world because there just seems to be a lot more companies coming out now that are, are just making amazing products at lower prices. One con with any new company is that you just hope that they stay around for a while because if they're not around in five years, 10 years, even one year, you're not gonna be able to get replacement parts. The needle and especially the nozzle are proprietary parts. So if this company isn't around, you won't be able to buy them and for an airbrush it's really important to have replacement parts but the quality that i'm seeing at this price point i expect them to stick around for a while that's just my hope so that's it for this review thank you guys for watching hope this was helpful i'll see you next week